Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Foundations meta game. Today we're trying out something pretty spicy, a deck featuring Hidatsugu's second right, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This card has been on Arena for quite some time, but now you get to craft it as an uncommon instead of a rare. A 4 mana instant, saying if target opponent has exactly 10 life, second right deals 10 damage to that player. So the goal is simple, get your opponent to 10 life and use second right to close it out. And then we also have four copies of Besiege the Mirror, which is one of the main reasons to go into black for this archetype, as it gives us another tutor effect that can potentially cast second right for four mana if we cast it with bargain. So we'll need to sacrifice another artifact, token or enchantment, all cards we can potentially sacrifice in this deck. And then Besiege will often get our second right for added redundancy, occasionally might also choose up another card and immediately play it. And then the rest of our deck needs to have a decent mix of artifacts, enchantments, and ways to damage the opponent, since we still need to get the opponent to 10 to begin with, so we will need a little bit of burn. And at one mana we've got a few burn spells, Burst Lightning also from Foundations can occasionally kick it for 5 total to deal 4 as opposed to 2. We've got Bolt Wave, just dealing 3 damage directly to the opponent as a sorcery. Then we've got Hopeless Nightmare, making the opponent a discard a card and lose two life. And then it's also an enchantment that sticks around for bargain synergies. And once we sacrifice it, we get to Scry 2. Although Scry 2, if we sack it to Besiege, is not very helpful, since we'll end up shuffling the deck anyway. And then we also have Fear of Lost Teeth as a creature that's also an enchantment, so we can once again sacrifice it to bargain if needed. And it's a 1-1 one -one saying if it dies it deals 1 damage to any targets and we gain 1 life. So if our opponent's at 11 life for instance, we can attack with our Fear of Lost Teeth and our opponent either blocks it, it dies and we deal 1 damage, putting the opponent to 10, or they take it and they fall to 10. So under most circumstances Fear of Lost Teeth can be pretty useful for kind of fine-tuning the opponent's life total a little bit. And the Vine Lasher also fills a similar role. Whenever a land enters, we get to deal one damage to target opponent. Also has Offspring, so we can make an additional copy of it. And the copy can also be sacrificed to Besiege the Mirror's bargain ability. So that can also come in handy. And uh, yeah, can also potentially respond to the landfall trigger. Let's say our opponent is at 10 life, and we're just waiting for our fourth line drop. Then with Vine Lasher in play, that can be a bit of a liability, since you think our opponent will fall to 9 life if I play my land out. But if you respond to the landfall trigger with your instant speed second right, you can still get the opponent while they're at 10 with a landfall trigger on the stack. Of course, this trick does not work with Besiege, which is a sorcery. And then at 2 mana we've got a few more artifacts we can sack to bargain. Legion Extruder deals 2 damage to any target when it enters, so we can also take out opposing creatures with it, similar to Burst Lightning. And then it will stay in play, giving us the ability to sacrifice another artifact to extrude a 3-3 artifact golem token, so that can also give us an alternate game plan in case second right maybe doesn't pan out. And then a Sahili's Lattice is another artifact we could sacrifice to the extruder to make those golem tokens, and then when it enters makes us discard a card and draw two, so that can also be a way of smoothing out our draws, maybe getting rid of excess copies of Besiege and uh, Second Right if we have too many in hand, or maybe dig towards them if we're just missing one of them to win the game. And then our mana base has lots of red-black dual lands, because we do need triple black on Besiege, so ideally we only have one non-black mana producing land in the deck, which we have with our one mountain, five swamps, Fabled Passage also quite synergistic with the Vine Lasher, enabling a landfall several times, and then a bunch more red-black dual lands, the Black Lave Cliffs, good to play early, Blazemire Verge initially only makes black mana until we find another Swamp or Mountain. And then we've got a Jagged Barons entering tapped, but also dealing one damage to the opponent, so that can also maybe help fine-tune the opponent's life total. And then Sulphur Springs a Pain Land. Speaking of Pain Lands, those are also very good against this strategy, because if our opponent knows what's incoming, they can just leave a Pain Land untapped, and then if they're at 10 and we cast a second right, our opponent can just take a damage off their Pain Land, fall to 9 and survive. So that's also something you need to keep in mind when playing this deck. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Promising Hand, some early ways to deal damage, and then Besiege sacking either Artifact or Enchantment. Can find Second Right, and uh, yeah, maybe start with Barons, and then next turn I can go Vine Lasher plus another Barons. Could also wait to play it with Offspring. Which is somewhat reasonable. And then for now, just play the Nightmare. 
and then Vine Lasher with Offspring will give us a bit more flexibility on how to lower the opponent's life total, so we don't deal too much damage. So they're at 16. So with two Vine Lashers, basically, and now a Bolt Wave, we should be pretty close. Now they can, of course, remove the Vine Lasher before it deals any damage. But if one survives, that could be enough. And they've got to cut down. Double cut down, it looks like. All right. Surprised they kept both of those. And now Annex is going to lose him to life. That's going to make things a little tricky. Because we don't have a great way to predict the opponent's life total in the next turn or two. So start with Lantis. Discarding Swamp is fine. Find a Burst Lightning. So yeah, if our opponent doesn't play Demon, we can Burst Lightning them down to 10 and then second right would do it. Slasher's fine, so yeah. Opponent will fall to 12. Burst Lightning down to 10. And then second right for the win. Awesome. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, our hand's promising. We've got good early damage output and a second right. Facing red-white auras and Battlefield Forge. Could help, but could also be a bit of a liability here. And then, yeah, we also have to watch out for the lifelink aura, sheltered by ghosts. So I think I need to just keep a burst lightning for now. Also, if they play a manifold mouse, that's probably worth taking out before it triggers. Otherwise, we're just gonna die before turn four. And yep, speak of the devil. And now double battlefield forge in the opponent's mana base. So yeah, getting them to exactly 10 life is gonna take a lot of uh, luck as well. Sahili's Atlantis is interesting. Yeah, probably play Vine Lasher with Offspring at this point. And then I hope we can draw another land if I discard one. Another second right I can now discard, but that will let the opponent know what's incoming. So that's awkward too, if they're paying attention. Eh, just an attack for one at least. And now a Vindicator. That one's a bit scarier when suited up. And Scavenger, opponent at 16. Fear of Lost Teeth, the draw. So this turn, we could play another Lantis. But yeah, I kind of have to discard second right. Because all the other cards are somewhat useful. And then can play Fear of Lost Teeth as a chum blocker, which they might remove with uh, Sheltered by Ghosts. Which would then make it awkward to catch back up. Or I can just hope to top deck land naturally. And then hope to get them to 10 exactly. Bolt Wave to 13. They might tap one Battlefield Forge to 12. This does have Vigilance. Yeah, close call. I think I'm just gonna discard the second right and then take it from there. I did find the land. So I can Bolt Wave to 13. And then next turn we can maybe play Vine Lasher with Offspring. I don't think our opponent necessarily saw the second right in our graveyard. Plays another Vindicator. And stays at 13. So yeah, Vine Lasher with Offspring. Put our opponent to 11 with a Landfall. Can still play Fear of Lost Teeth and then next turn. Assuming they don't use Battlefield Forge, we can get there. But yeah, that's going to be pretty tricky. Could also just play a pair of Extruders, take out their Vindicators, and then Extruder can be an alternate win condition. 
I think I prefer that plan. Because the other plan involves their opponents basically making a mistake and not realizing that they can tap the battlefield forge. I would rather plan for a game where our opponent knows what they're doing. And then now with Extruder and Double Lattice we can pump out a bunch of 3-3s. Three Taking two. Alright, might be time for Vine Lasher now. Put our opponent to 11 and have mana left for Extruder. Yeah, our opponent still hasn't played any Auras, so they've drawn all creatures this game. Alright, opponent's got one Battlefield Forge untapped. Place Manifold Mouse with Offspring. They could have tapped the other Battlefield Forge. So what does that imply? I guess that they are maybe aware of second rights. Because with only one card in hand, it's not like they need both white and red mana. But yeah, maybe if we can bait out a pump spell, our opponent will tap the forge and put themselves to 10. So that would be fine by me. So I actively want him to save the Heartfire Hero. But looks like a trade is happening. So we take two. Hopeless Nightmare will put our opponent over the threshold now. So, yeah. I guess play Fear of Lost Teeth and pass. And if our opponent were to somehow tap Battlefield Forge end of turn, we still get him. Otherwise, we can keep extruding. Once again, keeping a Battlefield Forge for another Manifold Mouse. And they can give a double strike, but still doesn't attack past a 3-3. Three, three. Opponent is still attacking. So we can extrude twice. Well, this has been a strange game for sure. The aura deck not drawing any auras. And Battlefield Forge putting us in an awkward spot. Because without Battlefield Forge, we could block with Fear of Lost Teeth, put them to 10, and then Second Right would get the job done. As we draw another one. Can just start attacking now, I suppose. And just give up on the dream. I guess I can cast a Nightmare if our opponent feels inclined to cast our last spell. Second Right still gets them. If they were holding an instant. Maybe a Shard Mage's Rescue. Although it doesn't explain the fact that they didn't just keep up planes then. Maybe they just wanted to play the mind games. Alright, moment of truth. And burst lightning my vine lasher. You've activated my trap card. Our opponent's now at 10. And second right, we'll get the job done. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No red mana at the moment. But otherwise, we've got most of the cards we would need. So I'll still try it. Pair of Vine Lashers. And there's a red mana. Don't have to play it right away. Could just uh, Bolt Wave here, for instance. But yeah, if our opponent spends their second turn playing removal instead of adding a threat to the board, I don't mind. 
Okay, so next up, hit you for one. And then it might be Fear of Lost Teeth plus Bolt Wave now. I'll leave Legion Extruder as a potential answer to an opposing creature as well. And a Paw Patch Formation. Ooh, that could be annoying. Our opponent having a food token they can sacrifice. And now the Duress as well. The 1 2 punch. So they see the second right, and they can plan accordingly. Just leaving up a food token at all times is one way to beat it. Opponent took the extruder. So we'll see what's next. All right, for now, probably play a land attack and then plan to play Vine Lasher with Offspring. If we have multiple Vine Lashers in play, and our opponent is getting close to below 10 life, then we can always respond to a specific landfall trigger. Kind of just wait for the right one, and then once they're at 10, we can second right at instant speed. Alright, so if I attack, I put my opponent to 10, so that would be within range. Problem is with Lattice, if I want to play it to hit my land drop, I wouldn't be able to then play the second right this turn cycle. So then things get pretty tricky. But uh, yeah, let's just start by attacking. Because if this is a game where we just need to win the old-fashioned way, I may as well get my damage in. Could also discard the second right. Then our opponent maybe doesn't fear it as much and we find a replacement copy or a besiege. That might also work out, because, yeah, knowing about second rights is half the battle. And we found a replacement copy. But now Jagged Baron's my land for turn. Still gonna play it, that way if they sank the food token, they're within second right range again. And since we just discard second right, it's kind of tempting for them to just pan their life total. Shielder's Edict. Sacks my 1-1. One, one. And the yeah, opponent's gonna be stubborn and keep that food token available. So, yeah, it looks like we won't get there with second right after all. Start by attacking. Opponent takes it. Play lands. And Nightmare. And then our opponent's probably sacking the food token now. And then end of turn I can sack to Scry. Yeah, going to two is maybe a mistake on their part, because now if they sack the food token I could just respond with a burst lightning or a shock. So they maybe waited a little bit too long. Alright, back up to five. Could also see Restless Cottage get busy to make more food tokens. We're looking at the graveyard for a deadly cover-up, I see. Well, we'll let that resolve. And then we'll see what they get rid of. Might be a Vine Lasher at this point. Not too concerned about a second right anymore. But yeah, the creature lines can make the difference this game. Opponent gets rid of our Legion Extruder, also pretty good with Atlantis on the battlefield. So, yeah, we need to come up with five more damage. And our opponent's got a cottage to gain life. I guess four more damage with the Fear of Lost Teeth now triggering. Opponent got to see the second right in hand as well. And a Jagged Baron's. I guess I'll hang on to that in case we top deck our Landfall creature. But yeah, Cottage is going to make things very difficult now. Still have a window to top deck our uh, Bolt Wave to just win if they don't have a land to sack the food. And our land enters tapped. Alright, so with Jagged Barons and a Bolt Wave we get there. And Besiege can get Bolt Wave. Wow. 
doesn't come up often, but uh, yeah. Cast Besiege to get the almighty one mana sorcery, dealing three damage. And there we have it, a good game indeed. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a keepable hand. Turn one, I'll run out of Vine Lasher. Hopefully it can deal a little bit of damage. And then we've got Extruder plus a bunch of other artifacts to get the ball rolling. Yeah, maybe for now Lattice, just to help hit my land drops. And then keep the Nightmare as something cheaper. Alright, so struggling to hit our land drops now. Put on blue whites. which kind of variety? Is it an Oculus deck? Chart, of course, so points in that direction. And this card's the namesake card. Alright, Verge was a good pickup. So Nightmare, also a way to kind of help the opponent to discard their heavy hitters, but they've already got one in the graveyard, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, we could Nightmare twice. Although Extruder gives us more flexibility next turn. So it's kind of a close call. Two damage could be enough to take out the new Kiora, which they might also be running. Or perhaps a Monastery Mentor, but it's not going to take out their 5-5. Five five. So yeah, opponent's at 14. Extruder put him to 12. And then... They're close to dying to a second right. Problem is, Vine Lasher is not going to be able to attack if they bring back Oculus and Manifest Dread. They can block with a 2 2. And with Recommission, Oculus is untapped. Another Besiege to draw. Well, the good news is our opponent does not have any pain lanes to mess us up. So. Yeah, I guess the plan is just Nightmare, make you discard, and then hope to top deck a land. Any land will do. And then Vine Lasher can chump in the meantime. Attacking now just to lose it is maybe a little too suspicious. I can just chump the 2-2, assuming it doesn't turn into a huge flyer. And then still have Legion Extruder available too. So I guess the 2-2 would not have a good attack into the Legion Extruder. So our opponent hangs back. So we actively need our Vine Lasher to die now, or we can, I guess, respond to the Landfall trigger with a second right, since we don't need the Sorcery Speed Besiege. So then we can still leave the Vine Lasher in play. And that's definitely the more elegant solution. Probably requires going full control just to make sure that the trigger doesn't resolve. Opponent gets to Manifest Dread. Now the only downside of responding to the Landfall trigger is the need to play a second right when our opponent can have a counterspell. And Jagged Barons, that's the most awkward land to draw in this spot. So that's not going to do it. Alright, so I can't play the land or else my opponent goes to 8 life. So I guess all I can do is just sack Nightmare enough turn to scry and hope to find a land that doesn't deal the opponent damage. And hope we don't die in the meantime. Opponent might have some bounce spells at the ready. But yeah, we've done the hard part, so getting the opponent to 10. Opponent did not do anything enough turn, so if they have a counter spell. This game's probably over. So I would love for them to tap out. Hardy Jin is mostly tapped out now. Alright, let's see if we can find an untapped land. We cannot. Alright, bottom bottom. I just need to top deck here. There's no other way out. Put 
Bono gets to manifest, that's fine. And a fear of lost teeth. That's sad. What a way to go. And the opponent's got lethal with two flyers. Nothing I can do about those. Yeah, that's just game over. Jagged Barons, what are you doing to me? Can see if we would have scryed into a land next turn. Opponent goes to attackers, sends in both flyers. And yeah, don't have any blocks. Let's see how close we were. Well, apparently the lands are hiding, so not sure how close we actually were there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand needs to find a few more lands. We've got second right and besiege for redundancy, and then a couple ways to deal damage early. But may need to find a couple more lands and maybe a few more ways to put our opponent down to 10 to begin with. Alright, for now, kind of like Bolt Wave. And then wait on Vine Lasher until we can maybe play it with Offspring or at least enable Landfall right away. And then play the Extruder. Even though we could save it as removal. Opponent on push pull in the graveyard, so might be more of a reanimator deck. So don't necessarily want to help them discard with Nightmare right now. Alright, so I'll play Vine Lasher with Offspring. It's somewhat likely to eat a couple removal spells. But I think that's reasonable. At least no pain lands on the opponent's side to mess up our second right. And our opponent does nothing, so there might be a sweeper incoming. Elder Dragon War. And then next turn can also discard. So I can play Lattis, probably discarding Besiege, even though it's more flexible than second right. I don't want to show them the second right, because then our opponent knows what's incoming. And then, yeah, Bolt Wave down to 12. And then Burst Lightning down to 10, sets up second right, so gonna wait on Nightmare. So we have a bit more instant speed flexibility in case our opponent loses life. They discarded Valgavoth, so that's what they're gonna try to reanimate. Fountain Port, a way to lose one life, but I imagine our opponent's gonna be tapping out for something. Zombify Valgavoth, wanna burst lightning now, otherwise our opponent can cast a burst lightning thanks to Valgavoth paying one life. And then uh, that would mess things up, and now we just gotta hope they don't have a burn spell. They don't, and our opponent loses the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is functional, assuming we can pick up an extra a land or two. Fear of Lost Teeth into probably not their copy. Gives us a lot of control over the opponent's life total, one damage at a time. And a Palm Patch recruits. Alright, so we'll get in for one. Between Extruder and Bolt Wave, we have five more damage. And our opponent's on our Rabbit's deck. Alright, there's line four. Although, I wouldn't be able to fire off both of these right now. Still probably worth it to attack. Could also extrude the Mentor to slow them down. Then they'll get a Recruit trigger. So the Recruit grows. I think I'm still better off attacking here. And then yeah, if I use the Extruder on the Mentor, they just grow this up to a 3-2, but that's probably acceptable. And 
And then between Boltwave and the Fear of Lost Teeth, I'm hoping we can still get them to 10 life. But if they were to hop to it, make three one ones, the Mentor can become quite scary. But let's get another one. Can maybe hang on to Fabled Passage still in case we find our Vine Lasher. Could be a way to kind of fine tune our damage output. All right, found another Beseech. So we have some flexibility. I could just Beseech now, getting another Bolt Wave, for instance. That way, if I draw land, next turn I can Bolt Wave plus second right. And then Fear of Lost Teeth can always target the opponent's creatures. Doesn't need to go face. Alright, so we might be able to win with a land drop now. Opponent does indeed have the hop to it, making three rabbit tokens. Okay. Yeah, had I attacked last turn with Fear of Lost Teeth, we might have been able to just win without needing to top deck a land. And uh, yeah, looks like we'll have to survive one more turn. Is that gonna happen? I guess we can extrude the paw patch. Opponent's diversifying. Bolt wave you to 10. And then we just need to survive one attack. Another Knight Errant Convoked we don't mind seeing, as long as they don't find any life gain effects. No pain lands to worry about either. And yeah, Quest Scholar plus Evangelist is both fine. So your opponent's got an impressive board, but they're at the most dangerous life total. Beseech, at this point sacking Extruder. But again, if we want to sack Fear of Lost Teeth, we can also damage their creatures. And second right for the win. Awesome. Always very satisfying. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands got potential. Got our early damage, and then Beseech to get second right. For now, play Barons. Opponents might be on Mono Black. Which, uh, yeah, for opponent just curves Slasher into Bloodletter. We don't have a great answer to that combination. I guess we could Extruder plus Burst Lightning the uh, Slasher. So if we want to set up for that outcome, I would just go Vine Lasher plus Tap Land right now. And then likely to see a removal on Vine Lasher, we don't. And it's gonna be a Liliana instead. Alright. Vine Lasher down. I don't think I care about Liliana plussing. Can maybe Lattice discard a Beseech. And then for now, do we keep up Burst Lightning for a potential Deep Cavern Bats, or do I just Bolt Wave, put it at 14? Next turn I get them to 10. Yeah, I guess uh, if they play a Deep Cavern Bat, they would get to see my hand anyway. Four mana for an Archfiend, so that's acceptable. Alright, so we've got everything in place. Extrude you to 12. End of turn burst lightning. Discard Besiege to Liliana, and second right for the win. So hopefully nothing goes wrong. If I discard second right, 
the jig is up, so even though Besiege is more flexible, I'll still discard it here. Bloodletter does not change anything. I do take 12, so that hurts. But yeah. Burst lining you to 10. And 10 is the most dangerous life total. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hands got potential. We've got a little bit of early damage, and then second right ready to go. So hopefully we can get our opponent to 10 by turn 4. Start with Fear of Lost Teeth to maybe get an attack in. Opponent black, green, Vine Lasher the draw. Step 1 attack. And uh, yeah, good way to play it with Offspring, for now just Extruder. Opponent's at 19. If I go Vine Lasher, plus let's say land for now puts them to 18, Nightmare to 16. Yeah, I think that works out. Opponent discarding a Swamp. And now Anoint takes care of Vine Lasher. Find another Fear of Lost Teeth. So, yeah. Can put our opponent to 13 here. So it's not quite within range of a second right next turn, unless a Fear of Lost Teeth were to die. And now a Glissa as well. Alright, so now with Nightmare, opponent falls to 11. And then we're just a land away, since Fear of Lost Teeth can attack, either dying dealing one damage, or getting in for one. Ooh, the rest, that's unfortunate. Exactly at the time where we were able to combo. And now a Dread Knight. So what I can do is jump and just put our opponent to 10. Since Glissa could destroy enchantments otherwise, although they would more likely draw cards. And the problem now is I don't have a fourth land yet, so scrying is not very helpful when I both need land 4 and one of my effects, so I think that means just play Vine Lasher with Offspring and pass. Yeah, the rest had to go, ruin a good thing. Anoint my fear. And then if our opponent draws with Glissa, they would also lose a life. So then they're no longer within range. But uh, yeah, so it goes. I guess we're just going to try and win the old-fashioned way. So play a land. Put our opponent to 7, and then we can sacrifice Nightmare to Scry. And Glissa can hit me. If they destroy the Nightmare, I also get to Scry. So our opponent gets a bit more aggressive. One falls to six. And now Preacher, a way to gain them life if they make the 1-1 one, one Vampire token. So, yeah, got a lot of work to do here. Besiege no longer does it. We we'll just get a Bolt Wave, put them to three. Uh, Lattice, without something to discard would just be a 3-3 with Extruder, so also not very impressive. I mean, maybe Besiege is fine. I get to Bolt Wave them to 3, and then there's a few top decks that are lethal. And then I'll bargain, sacking the Nightmare probably. 
since they cannot blow that up with Glissa, so another top deck Besiege, sacking Extruders lethal. Could also sack the Vine Lasher, although let's see, are we just dead if they activate Cottage? 10, 13, so yeah, I probably need the 1-1 one -one as a blocker. And I have to top deck next turn anyway. The Scry here doesn't matter since we would shuffle anyway. And I think Boltwave is our best option. So then another bolt wave could be lethal. And yeah, they can animate Cottage with the Lenor Elves as well. But then I'm still not that on board. Ooh, wow. Sword of Once and Future. Protection from blue and from black. That is relevant. Although there's nothing they can really get back to change the outcome. Opponent does not attack with Glissa. Since... I guess they didn't want to lose life, but they don't have to. Ah, uh, yeah, seven coming in. Opponent can get back a removal spell. So I guess I'm better off just chumping then. So opponent doesn't have anything to replay. And yeah, Bolt Wave or Besiege. That's a Blazemire Verge, sadly. Could not quite top deck our way out of this one. But yeah, the duress was really key, sniping the second ride before we could fire it off. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little painful with double springs. But we have a bit of burn and then Besiege to hopefully get the job done. Facing black-white, so a life gain deck, not exactly where we want to be. I'll uh, probably have to fetch first. So Blazemire Verge can also make red mana. Could get Mountain, but eventually I'll need triple black for Besiege. So I think Swamp is still the pick. Alright, start with Extruder. And then finding Burst Lightning or Hopeless Nightmare would put our opponent to 10 next turn, assuming there's no additional life gain or interaction. And Braids is next. That's fine. And our opponent doesn't do anything with it. Another Besiege to draw. Okay, so what I can do now is double Bolt Wave. And then next turn Besiege get Extruder, which gives me another thing to sack to the second Besiege. So we have a plan to eventually get there. It's maybe not the prettiest plan. Could also keep this Bolt Wave since I can still cast it with 5 mana alongside another Besiege. So they're maybe less suspicious. So take three. Braids triggers. Opponent missed a land drop as well. And Lattice the draw. Lattice gives me fodder for Extruder. But uh, yeah, I think we just Besiege for another Extruder here. And then hope our opponent doesn't gain life in the meantime. They might have a bunch of creature removal in hand. Opponent falls to 13, so they don't really have a reason to be suspicious yet. Other than I just cast a Besiege for an Extruder. So yeah, just tap out for a random creature, please. If they get rid of the Extruder, I'll need to play Lattice for a bargain. And wow, Allegiance to Ashes. That was unexpected. So now I can Besiege and immediately play Second Right for free. Found a Vine Lasher. So if the token sticks around, I can sag that to Besiege next turn. But that's a pretty big if. So I think the cleanest play is still... 
Lattice, discard Vine Lasher, keep Bolt Wave and land, or I could discard the land and just Bolt Wave now, but then they might be able to piece it together what we're trying to do. I think that's maybe still fine. Alright, so Jagged Barons and Cliffs. So we could also go Vine Lasher. But yeah, if I play Cliffs, then they're at 11. So that doesn't quite work out. So yeah, I think it's still just Bolt Wave. Play tapped Cliffs. And then opponent's at 10. Nightmare makes me discard, that's fine. Barons can go. And a Pixie can pick up Nightmare, make me discard again. I'm down to one card, but that one card should win me the game. So that's what they were trying to set up all along. Opponent sacrifices Nightmare, I fall to three, so they got us very low. Our opponent probably feels pretty safe. At 10 life, even drew the second right. But uh, yeah, as long as I don't die to my own Sulphur Springs, we'll close it out in style with another Beseech. And there we have it. Awesome! So yeah, we got to see our second right burn deck in action. Not the most competitive deck, I'll say. It is uh, a little bit janky, requires the right circumstances, and once your opponent has any inkling of what you're up to, then they can somewhat easily play around it by either keeping up burn spells to damage themselves, keeping pain lands available, or even food tokens to gain life. So it's not too difficult to avoid dying to a second right, but yeah, sometimes the deck can just win on turn 4 if everything lines up, so it is quite fun to play, and there's never a dull moment when you're playing this type of deck, but uh, yeah, still would not necessarily recommend it for the ranked ladder. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!